Keyword Crypto is a show for people who are curious and enthusiastic about crypto, but possibly a little skeptical about other aspects of the crypto space. We do this show for fun. We do it for you. We don't have any sponsorship or anyone that we're creating content for other than ourselves. And for the most part, we like it that way. All we ask is that you share it on Twitter, tell your friends about it, hit us up, engage with us, let us know what guests you want to have on the show, the questions that you want answered, and all that kind of stuff. Check out our Patreon page. Our website is keywordcrypto.com and follow us on Twitter at Keyword Crypto. Thanks again for listening and enjoy the show. Yay! Right. I love the I love the <laughs> applause <Finally>. intro. <laughs> Keyword Crypto. Keyword Crypto. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Keyword Crypto. I'm JJ. I'm here with Michael. Michael is the shitcoin shell, and I'm the dumb kid. <laughs> Today, we have a very special guest back. He was one of our first guests ever in, what, 2018? Not one of. He was our first guest ever. I, th- I think you were our first guest ever. Yeah. Oh, you were. You were totally our really? first guest. So okay. that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah. Man, this is awesome. Jackson Palmer, the creator of Dogecoin, a you were a YouTuber. You were a YouTuber. You were More a post tense uh, yeah. t- tw- Twitter personality. Welcome back to the show. It's really great Thank to have you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, it, it's been a minute. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen. I haven't. I haven't really heard anything from you since you disappeared from Twitter and. <laughs> I, like, I think okay. I think you, I think some people feared for my safety. I kind yeah. of uh, kind of ghosted on everybody, uh, just everywhere, um, which was kind of nice, actually. Um, but yeah, I think some people were confused if they didn't know me in real life. So you luckily um, JJ had your contact info, and so that, yeah. that's how I knew you were okay. <laughs> yeah, you were a pretty popular YouTuber. You had you had your um, Crypto Weekly show. Mm-hmm. And then you had a lot of followers on Twitter too, so you were a you were a pretty yeah. avid Twitter user. Yeah, like is fifty thousand at its peak. Yeah. Oh wow. So is it is it fair to say that you rage quit Twitter and crypto? Is that like <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> I wouldn't say it was. I, I uh, it was actually for me a lot less rage uh, than there usually has been in the past. It was more of a um, <laughs> less rage uh, than usual. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I, I'm usually I'm pretty filled with rage, um, but um, it was it was more of a kind of me just trying to slip out the back door, kind of than than anything. Uh, and I think that's probably why I've been able to stick with it. Like I haven't I haven't been back on Twitter since you know since I kind of disappeared. And um, you quit Twitter in kind of an interesting way, didn't you? You like I did. I um, well, I didn't tell anybody, right? And uh, I just kind of. I decided um, that I was just, and I'm, I'm trying to, I have to keep reminding myself that we're in 2020. I keep saying this year, and I, 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 then I'm like, wait a minute, okay. Uh, so yeah, last year I, I kind of, I I'd previously quit Facebook, you know, and everybody, it was the trendy thing to do, so I quit that um, a long time ago. But um, I just found that uh, social media was just generally having uh it, w- it was taking more from me than it was giving back, um, you know, just mentally, energy-wise. Um, but also, like, as a content creator, it's also, it, it does actually cost you money and time, uh, as you guys know, to, to do a podcast or do a YouTube channel. And um, and so I just, but rather than make a big deal about it, because, you know, then the, the, the problem is if you do that, then all the crypto uh, blogs are going to, you know, oh, Jackson right. Palmer rage quits because of it. And I was like, I just, I'm all the podcasts, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to like disappear one day. And so um, it's actually harder than you would expect um, to do uh, <laughs> on Twitter. If you don't want to lose all your, uh, your handle and everything. Um, because the main reason I, I actually, the, the kind of thing that pushed me over the edge was um, I was getting a lot of impersonators. Um, and I guess crypto is probably hotter back then than it is now, but, uh, people would kind of share, uh, you know, my links of my Twitter account with all those followers or my YouTube channel with all those followers, uh, with some other person who was trying to shill their whatever coin and say, Hey, you know, if you just send me a couple Bitcoin right now, I'm Jackson Palmer, I'll do a video for you. And some people, I don't know if, who knows why would fall for that. 
Um, and then they blame me. They'd come back and be like, you should really stomp down this impersonation. And I'm like, that's, right. that's just not my responsibility because you were stupid enough to send some random person claiming to be me uh. money. And um, so I didn't want to lose my handles because I was like, I can delete my Twitter account, but then one of the impersonators is just going to like scoop up the um jackson handle so that was altruistic then you wanted to see yeah so i had to uh i had to actually write a script that um (laughs) that went through all fifty thousand people following me and blocked them and then unblocked them via the twitter api that's the only way to actually (laughs) um force a person to unfollow you on twitter hot tip if you ever need to do it you wrote a computer program to quit twitter (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it pretty much. I I I wrote <laughs> I wrote some Python and it. Um, yeah, because they don't give you a way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Because so let me let me because I'm not as technical as you and JJ. So if you just deactivated the account, they would all still be following that account, and then somebody else could pick up that account. Well, yeah, no, they wouldn't be following it. So the, the Twitter gives you a couple options. You can kind of suspend your account. You can, um, and then but it's kind of like the account's still there, that you can delete it, but then the username becomes available for somebody else that wants to take it. Um, the other option is you can make it private, right? So a lot of people do that. They make their Twitter account private. But the problem with that is the way that private works on Twitter is everybody who is already following you, when you hit the, hey, take it private, they basically get auto-granted permissions to view your private Twitter account. So gotcha. um, there's there's no real way to say, hey, I want to go private and Force all these people out of my life. I don't want them following me. Yeah. Um, take me back to zero followers. And so I had to write a script to do it. Um, and uh, it took like a week to run. And it got shut down a couple times because they thought I was abusing their API. But eventually, uh, come the end of the week, uh, I was pretty much uh, an empty shell account on on Twitter and shut down my YouTube. And uh, yeah. So... Twitter tried to shut you down because they thought you were abusing the API and you had to be like, no, I'm trying to delete all my yeah. followers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I should have should have written them. I did actually write them. I'm like, if you had a feature that just allowed me to actually go private, this wouldn't be an issue. But yeah. yeah. If you but they don't fe- want you yeah. to. They, they, yeah, they want not. you to keep all those followers and keep coming back. No, exactly. Back and, that, that's it. Yeah. It's the drug. <laughs> you told us why you quit social media, but why crypto in general why why did you quit youtube your youtube channel was great i thought you educated a lot of people and you know yeah I, yeah and I, I i i'm still you know have like proud of the content i put there i think a lot of it was useful to a lot of people um i did i didn't just delete the when i deleted the youtube account i uh i mirrored all the content on my personal website um and uh, you could still go and view it all there which a lot of people did um, but I did take it even that down recently. And the main reason I did that is like a lot of those videos are from 2018 and, um, just glancing at where crypto is now, it's like half of the stuff that I was saying two years ago is now like out of date, right? Like, uh, e- either the, the coins don't exist anymore or the plans have changed drastically or lightning didn't change the world. Like everybody thought it was going to, um, <laughs> yeah, except so, for me and JJ. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. I, I was just like, I don't want to, I also, you know, I don't want somebody to share one of the old videos and be like, oh, you know, you know, you know what it would be like next thing, Coindesk, like Jackson Palmer spreading disinformation about right. so-and-so. I just, I, so it sounds yeah. like what you need is an online platform that deletes stuff immediately after you post it. So it sounds like you belong in Snapchat. <laughs> well, I, I, I found the solution is much easier. You just don't post on social media, you know. Like, oh yeah, that's. Um, um, but then you the, can't. Yeah. yeah. Then you don't. Then you don't have follow. Actually, crypto Snapchat should be a thing. If it's not, I mean, that's that would, great because yeah. that would make I, sense. Yeah. I mean, I I post things all the time on crypto Twitter that like the next day I'm like, fuck, I don't want that on there. I'm gonna delete it. <laughs> I just <laughs> well, and it's it's more like you know what I what I realized with social media, and it wasn't just crypto that obviously you know I interacted with on social media. It was all these other things, um, you know, politics um, and stuff like that. But what I found is that it's okay to kind of it wasn't the consuming of the content on social media that that I think is addictive. It's the um, it's the posting, right? So it's it's either mm. either you post a tweet, or um, even worse, you post a reply to a tweet because there's kind of like once you've 
put that kind of foot forward, you're so invested in it. You know, yeah. like you're going to keep checking it. You're going to keep checking your phone to see if, you know, how many people liked your hot take or, you know, how many people want to <laughs> argue with you about it. And it's just like, I, you know, there's nothing actually, um, I think, net positive for the for the world in those kind of uh, when your whole goal is like, I just want engagement. I just want to, you know, um, go yeah. back and forth with a random person on the internet. It's kind of weird to me. There's so much, I mean, what you're talking about is the dopamine effect of, of mm-hmm. a social media. And I find that's even worse in crypto, Twitter, and tr- crypto in general, because everyone is looking for dopamine in places other than drugs, really, like mm-hmm. watching their yeah. money go up in value. And when people notice that they can get attention for the dumb shit that they do, it becomes this like feeding frenzy of attention and money oh my god that was just the worst combination i can't like oh it's terrible i saw some disgusting weird, like it, it's like those weird kind of challenges that people do on these like on tiktok i guess and like snapchat and stuff where they like put themselves in like personal harm in the way of personal harm uh oh, yeah. for views you know and it's kind yeah. of like what, what is wrong with people you know like yeah. it's uh i mean it's yeah. one thing when people like you know, create art and music to try to get lots of attention. I mean, that's one thing. But when people like, you know, I don't know, when you mix it with economics and finance and and, uh, anarchy. Well, I think it's incentives. (laughs) It's it's incentives, right? Like, I I, I feel like... um, Art and music. Some of the best art and music is 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 that which is created without the like in, the core incentive being money, right? Um, because um, you know it kind of I you know for lack of a better term comes from the heart. But I think um, I think most technology is at a point now where it um, it either is exists to kind of uh, conduct surveillance capitalism capitalism on you, you know, by basically selling all your data. Or right. it kind of makes people um, kind of fight their way to the top for attention, which is you know another weird kind of exploitation of of you know the mainstream users. And so it's oh yeah, totally. it's just kind of yeah, sad. Well, because it's like all you have to do is now you don't have to actually create anything but a platform. You don't have to you don't have to entertain people. You can just create the platform and then let everybody else do it for free for you. I yeah, mean, oh, that's yeah, the well, scary that's one thing. way. It's yeah, for like, sure. I mean, I remember reading about that one guy who asked his girlfriend to shoot him with a gun through a book hmm. to prove that it couldn't go through the book. Oh, I and it remember went through that. the book and then it killed him. Oh, yeah. And they, and they recorded the whole thing. And it's just like, what the fuck, man? Okay. It's just, like, right. it's, it's, just it's, it's an interesting um, kind of, it's interesting that technology has shifted that way. You know, like I think technology is available to everybody now and in, in like at, at a really affordable rate. Um, but I think it's either kind of spying on you or, uh, basically making you compete with other people, um, for eyeballs and Mm -hmm. with the only purpose being that, that, that company or platform is going to make ad revenue. It's like kind of, it's kind of depressing. There are not going to give you a cut of it unless you exactly make a certain amount of clicks or views or whatever. So it's like, you're, it's just like that you're, you're gunning to hit that number just so you can make a little bit of, of the money that they've already made. It's just yep. like, it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I must be a little naive or something because I still use social media for like the old school intended purpose, uh, which is like to find like-minded people. Fucking and boomer. It, it, it kind of works for me. Like, I mean, you're on this podcast, so I mean, something is, is happening. I've, I've met all, I mean, I'm like a part of a few art groups on Twitter now and that's awesome. And it's weird. I, I find it weird how... Basically, we started this podcast. I have zero. I had zero followers on Twitter. I still have very few followers on Twitter, but I'm I'm happy with the followers I have. I like the people that I've met. So, is that still possible, or do we live in an age where where social media is basically just going to become a sad story? I think the I think the platforms are designed um, like to 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 kind of fight against that that more pure use case and try and put you mm-hmm. down the the funnel or the pipeline that they have uh, spelled out for you but at the same time like I think you're you're lucky you're just unincentivized by those things right you haven't kind of fallen for it and so there's totally you know obviously there's there's totally uh, value in social media if it's done right and it's done in moderation and it's done in a way that 
Um, I, I think that's why a lot of early social media was as good as, as it was. Like the, mm. if I look at myself 10 years ago, I wasn't like technology wise, maybe a bit, bit of a slower internet connection, but things weren't that fundamentally different. But I think the difference was that uh, large corporations hadn't cottoned on necessarily to how well monetized uh, the thing that they were offering could be yet. Um, and so now it's just like the, the, the reason to use the platform is, is to just kind of f- for that uh, kind of dopamine hit rather than right. for the actual bonds you build with other people. I still think that the corporations haven't caught on. Not that way that they will. I think that's going to get even worse personally. But Probably. Until I mean, then, like, look. I until, think until, like, until then, I'll make art friends. <laughs> Twitter <Yeah>. still <laughs> does serve a massive purpose in, in the in the realm of news. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can say there's so many fucking fake news takes and fake tweets and blah blah, but but still, so much information is being released around the world. Well, yeah, because of cases this, because yeah. of this. Platform. Oh yeah, yeah. And I should be clear, like I still follow, like I still have, I have like kind of a, a stealthy Twitter account where I don't have any followers and I don't post. But I, I follow people and I read stuff, um, and the same on YouTube. I, I have, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. But I, I am more of a consumer of that in a way that is kind of on my terms, rather yeah. than um, me feeling the pressure to post an opinion on something and then having to like defend that, which is just like nice, yeah, ten mm. times more stressful than just you know yeah. reading an article and deciding myself in my own private space whether I think it's right or not, you know. You know, um, so when we when we started this podcast, actually, when Michael asked me if I wanted to do a podcast, I think the first thing I said to you, Michael, was I do not want to be a public personality at all. Like that was yeah. one thing I didn't want, yeah. probably because I came from uh, I came from a world of music and like playing on mm-hmm. stage, and I was a musician before, so I was I had experience with that, and I didn't. I kind of got addicted to trying to get attention was that was what would happen to me. And I didn't want Mm. that to happen in my new life. I, when I quit touring and playing music, that was when I joined Facebook actually in like 2010, pretty late. Hmm. And I didn't join Twitter until 2017. Um, and I joined it. (laughs) I joined Twitter to follow crypto because basically that was where I could get information about my favorite shit coins or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, one of the things that I noticed that you and I have talked about, I think we actually talked about it on that first episode that you were on, was you were a personality in crypto. Everybody knew you, your actual name, and your voice. Well, um, I don't know if that's actually your name. Jackson Palmer, it sounds like it's actually your name. <laughs> you, you, you weren't some anonymous account. You weren't a dog right. with sunglasses, basically, is what I'm trying right, to yeah. say. Um, and you, you mentioned that, like, you know, that was... I, I remember a tweet that says that you you posted that you said that you shouldn't trust anybody who posts from an anonymous account telling you to buy something, which is really mm-hmm. good advice. But I mean, what were some of the negative things about having your personality and your face and your voice and and everything that was so unique? I mean, what was that like having your being a public personality in crypto? Yeah. Um... <laughs> it has its ups and downs. Uh, it, it was, it was like, um, I think it's fine. I, I actually, you know, I don't have any problem with people that want to go and make a name for themselves on social media, especially if they're doing something good with that name and, and, you know, they get enjoyment out of it. I think in my case, um, when I was doing it, I really didn't have a choice so much. I kind of, um, you know, it was all fun and games back in, in 2013, which you know, it's crazy to think how long ago that was now. But um, when when Dogecoin was created, it, it was it was never a kind of there was not a lot of foresight to like what would be happening right. five years later. Um, you know, I mean, if you could go back in time, would you would you actually be anonymous? You think? I don't think I'd be anonymous. I think um, I think I would just go about it differently. And, you know, hindsight is kind of 2020, right? And so it's hard to say that, but I, I think that it's, um, I was kind of thrust into the spotlight. Um, and once you have a name like that, it, it kind of snowballs. So, you know, um, the, what often happens is if, if you get that kind of like 15 seconds of, of kind of in the spotlight, even if your Twitter, you know, 
your Twitter account isn't super active and you haven't been posting controversial takes there, all these people are going to start asking you to because they're going to say, hey, what do you think of this? Hey, what do you think of this? And the, the same thing happens with like uh, journalists reaching out to you, um, you know, saying, hey, can mm-hmm. you can you give me a comment on um, on this thing that's happening? And they post it. And so it's, it like builds as this snowball. And um, unless you have the context of what that snowball is going to end up like, at the beginning, it's kind of fun. Right. And it's kind of like, yeah, this is fun. Like uh, people actually care about my opinion. Wow. That actually feels all right. Um, Mm -hmm. But then it very quickly becomes like, oh, crap. There's actually like a whole other majority of people that that don't like your opinion. And um, and so you're very soon faced with all the perils of of being online. Right. Which is, you know, there's lovers, there's haters, there's people, there's trolls, there's there's everything, you know. And when that's attached to your own name as well, um, that is kind of like really in your face it's hard to escape um like you need a python script in order to yeah like in your career and just outside of of that like you don't really get a break and so i i think that um had i known all that i might have like been less likely to like go and talk to journalists or um you know uh not to disparage podcasts, but probably do less podcasts and less video <laughs> interviews unless I wanted the attention because, it, 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 you know, you don't really think about it at the time. And so that's it. But, you know, like I probably wouldn't change it drastically. Um, it was a really good learning experience, actually. And uh, I think it's given me a much better um, perspective on uh, just technology, on social media, on people, um, and also crypto. I think it gave me, you know, I wouldn't have had – the formed opinion that I have now on cryptocurrency if I hadn't gone through all that. So, you know, no regrets. Do you miss educating people about technology and cryptocurrency? Um, a little bit. Uh, I, I do. I do. There's, there's often mostly in the form of like, I'll find something online that's really cool, like some, you know, cool project on GitHub or something like that. And I'll be like, Oh, I wish I could share this with people. And I'm like, uh, I'll just share it with some, some, some of my friends. Um, but, uh, I, I also, I work in tech and so I have every day, I have the opportunity to educate people like that I'm in the, that I work with. Um, and so I kind of get that satisfaction from there, honestly. Um, and, Hmm. uh, you know, most of my spare time now, I've like taken up other hobbies that are that are much less stressful than crypto, and uh, I play a lot of video games, and it's uh, it's actually quite refreshing to not have to always be thinking as well. I th- that's the other thing I found is that I um, I sleep better and uh, I'm less kind of stressed out having to like be twenty four seven thinking about like you know cryptocurrency and then my other life. You know, well, that's yeah. actually really interesting that you would say that because uh, like. Michael and I were just having a text conversation before this talking about how now the trolls in crypto have gotten to the point where not, I mean, the trolls, it's almost like paparazzi have now invaded crypto. And, you know, (laughs) if, if, if the wrong photo gets taken of you and it get, you know, carbon based gets a hold of it or something like that, it can be like, Oh man, that is like the most stressful thing that you have to deal with. Now your job is going to find out that like, you know, whatever, it's just like, Oh, that's just man. being online. Like I, I think I, I, so, I understand yeah. why that's like even even more polarizing and, and problematic in crypto. But I feel like that's just like that's just the nature of of being online these days. You know, like everything is like infinite, like really easily searchable and really well indexed. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess that's right. We're just seeing kind of a spike of it in crypto. I, the last time you and I met up and had dinner, like I told you about the um, the gym friend. A thing that happened where like oh. you know um well, what's his name um uh samson michael Mao. S- samson mao's girlfriend you know a picture with her gym friend went crazy went went viral because carbon based you know he got dcma'd <laughs> for it and it, yeah, it was yeah. this whole thing and now we've got like pictures of crypto influencers and developers you know there's there's a picture of charles hoskinson with a with a <clears throat> with a crypto influencer Maybe. Uh, sit- I don't even know if it's her. Oh, we don't even know if it's her. With with basically a girl sitting on his lap, and people are like, oh my God, what is a crypto developer doing with a girl on his lap? And like, you yeah. know, people and are not upset even, about and, it. and you don't even know if she's sitting on his lap. She could literally just be leaning in 
to oh, him. Wow. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to look up this one. I mean, she um, could have just been like whispering <laughs> something in his ear or something like that, and then she could have been pulling back or you know, at whatever point. No, like, you know, it, you take a photo it's the same with context. anything, though, right? Like, yeah, everything can be taken out of context. Every day in crypto, there's another one of these things, basically. Yeah, it's a scandal. You know what I think it is, though? I think it's that, um, it's that dopamine hit, right? Like, people get bored if there isn't scandal right like yeah if it was just every day and and to be honest like when it, when because when you told me about that thing with like samson mount for instance um i was like it, it's a little bit hypocritical for somebody who's like day job is essentially to create drama and scandal and put crap on other people to like you know, <laughs> act offended yeah. when it's done to him you right know? like yeah um if if you're playing in that that space and like that's who you are is you're a scandalous person then you kind of have to probably grow a thicker skin but um yeah. that's just like what i think that's just the world these days you know oh, it's that yeah, people, people it. expect like if, if if the crypto news was just oh yeah it's just puttering along it's like a good open source project people would get bored of it and so people kind of i think crave this like it's the same with politics it's the same with music it's the same with art it's the same with everything is is people I, live for the the, the drama but that makes me sad because the drama should be like we're trying to change the world and we're trying to change the way people look at banks and governments and money. Like that should be the drama. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, again, I'm just a dumb I kid. I mean, look, people have been doing it since, <laughs> the, since the royals, you know, since the crown. And, and yeah, they just true. they love it. They love they love soap operas. They love daytime <laughs> dramas. They love all that stuff. I mean, they love the crypto sex culture. Yeah. yeah. I think I think yeah. it's just the, the the ultimate kind of um the kind of peak of you know uh, not to get too political but I think it's just like peak kind of late stage capitalism I think it's just the um Let's do it. Let's do it. Well well if you it, it's just if you think about it like like you said earlier Michael like they have these platforms right that have been built and how do you get more eyeballs on them? Right by fostering yeah. a culture where everybody is creating and consuming drama, um, yeah. that's how you get people to check their phone every fifteen minutes. Just drama, mm-hmm. drama, drama, drama. And so I think it's totally a manufactured culture. I don't think like I don't think humans just naturally found them stumbled themselves into this this situation. I think it was a manufactured thing to try and drive views of ads at the end of the day and more data collection. Yeah, I Did mean, we, in the early stages yeah. of, the, of the of the United States. You know, people were like, well, you know, newspapers were never this bad. And then you go back and you read clips of newspapers back then and they were just fucking awful. They were like just calling each other out, calling them fat pigs, call, you know, just yeah. doing just <laughs> so, sensationalizing every kind of argument you possibly could because that's the drama people had back then were newspapers. Yeah, what's sold wow. as well. Yeah. And then before so we'll, then it was, you know, Rome was doing it. With, and yeah, it's like okay. every major civilization that gets bored and eventually implodes has some form of, of that. <laughs> so that's civilization then. You think when we were hunters and gatherers, like cavemen, do you think cavemen had scandals? <laughs> yeah, there, there, not, there was definitely some drama, I'm sure. Somebody was still caveman the drama in those caves. When you're running, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, look, there's always going to be drama between people because people are dramatic. But I think when you're fighting for your life, I think yeah. things tend to be a little less dramatic. No, I mean, there's... things in perspective, but mm-hmm. I it's, don't know. It's late-stage capitalism, really. I mean, it's the... We also have like crazy problems with depression in this world. That's something yeah. I, I can imagine we probably didn't have as hunter gatherers when we were like trying to fight for our lives or whatever. And only living till twenty five on average. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we're we've created a lot of problems for ourselves. I don't know. Well, you so you basically quit social media, Twitter. Do you still believe that crypto can solve some problems and are you still interested in it or have you pretty much just kind of gotten over it and moved on with other interests in your life i've uh i get the occasional email from somebody asking me about crypto um and i sometimes you know like i said i do have like kind of a read-only twitter account mostly for following politics like michael was talking about but um and sometimes crypto does kind of make a, a weird crossover into my um, the politics people that I follow on, on Twitter, but, uh, I mostly stay out of it. I, I, I'm, I'm not up to date with it. I don't know a thing of what Ethereum is doing anymore, which, you know, I'm actually happy about. And, um, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, I play video games. I have taken up, uh, into home brewing my own cold brew coffee, which is, oh, is nice. turned out to be a fun hobby. And, uh, yeah, I just, so- just kind of like living life. 
I mean, you you used to. I mean, you used to have like like weekly or weekly or monthly meetups where you talk to people about crypto and you was a social thing and you were every week. You were, yeah. you, every week. So you were interested in it then, and so it's just basically. I mean, I do you still think crypto has a future? I think it has a like. I think it has as much of a future as any fledgling new technology right now. Like I, I think that it has mm. as much of a future as um, alternate reality or virtual reality. I think it has much of, as much of a future of any of these kind of like weird advanced uh, ML AI technologies. Um, uh, or yeah, I, I just I don't. I don't think it's made a compelling enough case, and like it, it's gone to the point where it's it's not about debating whether, oh, like is there promise there or is there you know uh, has it has it proven itself? It's more just like you can't argue with the objective fact that it's like it's over a decade and not much has happened, like in on the grand scheme mm. of things, right? Like there's yeah, it, the it, numbers got money. Up. Yeah, numbers gone up, right? But like the, the the money is like at this point seeming kind of seemingly just moving around between people that are still passionate right. about it, and so it's like it's cool, like cool cool project. I think it's it's um, and I I don't want to you know disparage anybody that kind of um, that still maintains it as a hobby um, or as a as a passion. Even I just think um, I think I I don't think it makes sense for people to have this kind of like this like super faithful, like it's their entire life devotion to the thing. Right. So um, cause I just don't, I don't think it has that level of importance in history. Um, yeah. versus, um, if you look at what's happening on the kind of global scale with like politics and kind of, uh, you know, class war and, and everything that's happening at a macro scale, I think that stuff is the kind of stuff you attach your, um, you're kind of, this is, this is, you know, my faith, this is my, um, what I really care about and think is going to change the world. That's another technology. Sure. Absolutely be passionate about it. Lots of people are passionate about Linux and GNU, right? But, um, I wouldn't say it's like, don't make it your identity, you know? And I think that's the kind of weird (laughs) thing. Like I, when I see Bitcoin is now, I'm like, I always laugh because Mm. I'm kind of like, uh, they always used to kind of make fun of people who would engage in so-called identity politics. And it's like, dude, like most people that are hardcore into Bitcoin, like Bitcoin is their identity. They have no personality yeah, outside of crypto. Yeah. And that's kind of so, a little sad. So, you know? so like, what you're saying is that cryptocurrency is like the MySpace of technology. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying it's like, it's just, <laughs> it's just a technology, right? Like, Cool your jets. Is, is That's so funny. I, I really hope that there's some idiot out there listening that thinking like Jackson Palmer hates crypto. That's the ultimate <laughs> buy signal. You probably <laughs> what? It's like no, you you watch it. You watch like the the block crypto or something is going to be oh, Jackson sh- calls it the MySpace so of like, technology. You watch. It, it's like <laughs> it's a know, crypto bit lord is going to be like this some, is the somehow most somehow <laughs> they'll use this even though I didn't mention Charles Hoskinson and you did. They'll say that I somehow you know was throwing shade at Charles. It's like. That's, that's Why do you think I said drama. you said it? Is because that yes. way that now we can get our hits. Now you we were can get our sitting on his things. Lap. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to bait me into saying something. I, I did. did. I did. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, a lot of people are really in it for the drama. I mean, it, yeah. it, I, I have to admit the drama actually does make things very interesting. But it's it's like one of those things where I have to check myself and be like, is that a but is that a really good reason to be interested in something? Because there's a lot of crazy people. Like I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. not, we've this podcast has from the beginning been about like the question of what's wrong with Bitcoin, basically. Like what mm-hmm. what's what's wrong with it? What and like you know, you as one of our first guests or as our first guest ever, um, <laughs> kind of set a lot of the tone because you know you. You were frustrated that that first interview with crypto. I mean, you were kind of you. You said all that's really happened with these altcoins is that we've created like Wall Street Part Two, basically. Yeah. Um, that is less regulated and more manipulated. What's what what what's what's crazy? You know, just thinking back on that statement is that I think I was probably even overselling it by calling it Wall Street. You know, two dot Like I, I don't think. I think the trajectory was headed there maybe when we spoke then, but um, it hasn't, 
it hasn't, you know, my, my whole, it's not if even, we go back like a yeah. year ago, I think what I, what I envisioned was that they were, you know, basically, uh, the finance industry was going to get recreated in this basically on a top of a new tech stack. Um, but in the same centralized kind of way. And, uh, but even that hasn't, doesn't seem to have eventuated, like eventuated. I'm not seeing like, um, Wall well, Street's still DeFi alive and well, getting, seemingly. Getting there a little bit. Oh, DeFi. That's probably something yeah. you're not following at all. Yeah, that's... I, I've heard there. it. I've heard it thrown around, DeFi. Um, sure. Uh, it's <laughs> a the- Ethereum's new infrastructure for ec- economics, basically, for the... the yeah, decentralized finance. Really, it oh, lasts. interesting. Now, the latest La- thing I saw was, um, and it didn't, it didn't surprise me at all, is I, I saw... Um, a whole bunch of kind of crypto grifters trying to get onto the whole um, uh, the coronavirus stuff that's happening, right? Um, and so I think I saw yeah. some tweet about, uh, I think it was, who I forget, even I'm even forgetting names of people, but the Binance dude uh, talking about how the Hong Kong handouts of money is like good for Bitcoin and how, and I think there's a lot of personalities in crypto who seem to be saying, oh, you know, this this epidemic, this pandemic is, is potentially good for crypto. And it's just like, mm-hmm. wow, guys. Right. Yeah, like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, you know, those are the same people that are like, oh, the stock market's going to crash. Everybody's going to buy gold and Bitcoin now or whatever. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I just, I think it's a little, it's a little sad of them to like use such disaster as a, uh, <laughs> it's good for Bitcoin. But So uh, if you, if you had a chance to start over today from scratch, <laughs> Yeah. Would you like? Is there something out in the world that you honestly think that a decentralized blockchain could actually help? Um, not you know, like the term, like those two words put together, decentralized blockchain, are kind of loaded in that they can mean so many things, right? Um, I think, uh, the way I like to think about it is more could the technologies which compose something like a decentralized blockchain be used positive to positively impact society. And when I say the technology, the, like the technologies that compose it, I mean things like, uh, you know, asymmetric encryption, like Merkle trees, um, you know, hash chains, like all, all of the, the, the pieces that make up that technology. And the answer is like, Absolutely. Like they're being used every single day in things like the Signal um, app and protocol and um, and various encrypted technologies, various things that allow for the signature and um, kind of provenance of, of signed assets and things like that. So I think absolutely, I think there um, there will be a, uh, a use for that stuff. I think I think that um, probably like the money aspect, I don't I don't believe in. Um, and I think I I just, it's interesting. I, I just, I don't think that was the right angle for the technology to be taken in is, is trying to do something with money. I think that, um, the technology like decentralization lends itself to much bigger world changing things like decentralized communications and encrypted communications, because it's that kind of technology that can be used to organize, you know, uh, a revolution, organize, organize people, um, to change, um, the politics, change the world, you know? So I, I think that's more where I see decentralization being really, really effective, um, versus trying to like go and replace, uh, something that already exists in centralized currency. When you created Dogecoin, um, yeah. for, for people who didn't listen to our first episode ever, which is probably most of our listeners, um, what when you created Dogecoin, were, was that meant to be a comment on Bitcoin, or were you trying to create a money? It was a joke. <laughs> it was just it was a, a joke. joke. <laughs> there was no, you know, so, as, and I've been asked that question like 20 million times. Right, and, of course. Um, the, and I, I think that I sometimes just to... Uh, well, how much money oh, did you make? No, oh, God, oh, my God, dude. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I think that I've probably given more verbose answers, but at the end of the day, it was a joke. And I didn't put any more thought into it other than it's a joke. You don't really uh, need to say more than that. I was really yeah. just... That, that's the thing is like pe- people don't... I don't know if everybody knew that's in the crypto or has gotten in the last couple of years, they realized that that was a joke. So... 
Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's 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 an interesting. Like, but I I agree. I I, think I guess it's, it's, yeah. I, I guess my real question was: Is were were you were you trying to make fun of Bitcoin because you believed this what you believe now back then? Um, no, I my 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 worldview and my just general view on everything has changed or not changed but evolved significantly over the last like what uh, seven years. But um, I think. That's crazy that it was that long ago, but um, I it it was it wasn't a, trying to make fun of crypto because even back then I honestly I didn't understand crypto that deeply. Like I knew high level what it was, but I was like I had maybe a few weeks to a month knowledge of like all the intricacies of crypto. I didn't I didn't I didn't know anything. I was a noob. Um, it was it was more a joke on um, the hysteria really right i'm um, getting back mm-hmm. to the kind of drama that we were talking about uh-huh. it's kind of like at that time there was all these like coins like litecoin and stuff popping up and people were losing their crap about it because the price was going up and all of that and i was more making trying to the joke was about making fun of that hysteria um and how that hysteria distracts from whether the technology is actually good or not right it's kind of like um you know what does it even mean if you have a dog on a coin? Like, is it right. versus versus trying to make fun of the technology? Because I didn't actually understand the technology as, as well as I sh- could have. So it wasn't like you. It wasn't like you looked into Bitcoin and you were like, "This is never going to work." I'm going to prove it by making a ridiculous doggy coin or whatever. No, that no. If, if okay. anything, like it started. It was it was me just making fun of like the. I guess the shills and the, the the people that would go out and say this is going to change the world, right. um, you know, and they were talking about like um, pot coin or something, you know, like I, I, I um, it, was, it was more a comment on that. Mm. And mm. Uh, I actually even went through a period like if you go back and you look at interviews and stuff of me, like the year following Dogecoin was created, I progressively learned more about crypto. I did have to jump into the Bitcoin source mm. code, and for a while there, I was even commenting that I think, oh, you know, it could be used as, a, as an alternative micro-tipping currency and all of this stuff. Um, uh, it's re- it's and- really kind of poetic that the reason you created Dogecoin is kind of similar to the reason that you quit uh, social media. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, I think it's because I, I lose, I really lose interest in things um, This like when I have to be around people who aren't getting shit done they're just talking about getting the shit done if that makes yes. sense right like I, I i only have a very limited window of patience and i stop having fun right like i like having hobbies and working on projects uh where i'm learning something um and i'm surrounded by people who are actively getting work done right and i think the joke that i was making back then was that People are just talking and speculating. They're not act without understanding what the thing actually is. And when I quit uh, Twitter and YouTube, it was a similar kind of, I was just so worn out of like having created these videos, trying to educate people, have, hoping in the back of my head that maybe one of these crypto projects would actually put the work in and, and, and ship something good, only to be disappointed by the fact that it all descends into drama. It all descends into shilling of, you know, pumps and dumps and all of that. You know, too many people talking shit and not enough people doing shit. Um, and so, mm. yeah, I think the, the, the start and the finish are kind of related in that way. Does it surprise you how much of a cult following still exists for something that you created as a joke that you walked away from that you openly kind I mean, of... There's Dogecoin beer. Yeah, there is Dogecoin beer, um, and it actually tasted pretty good. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it kind of surprises me. But you know, it, it with every passing year, Michael, it 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 actually surprises me less because I look at you know like what we were talking at the very beginning of of this episode. I, we were talking about how it's like everybody is striving for that fifteen seconds of fame. It's like all about eyeballs, all about attention. I feel like. Every the way that the the kind of meme cycle, for lack of a better term, works right now is memes are born, they peak, they go viral, they die, all within the space of like six hours, 
right, on today's internet. And so, yes, it is kind of like crazy for me to think, oh, you know, there's there's this cult following for, uh, you know, Dogecoin. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that happens every five minutes now with some like random person who posted a TikTok of, you know, you know, their yeah. dog sneezing or something. It's like, it's but, but, crazy. I mean, I think for with like with what you created, it's different. I mean, I, there's, I think there's like on two hands, I can probably count the amount of memes that still exist 10 years later, five years later, mm. 20 years later, 30 years later. Yeah. And I That's think a good that point. it's surprising. I mean, it's, it's interesting that, that Doge is one of them. I mean, you know, like you get like bobsled teams and this totally. and that. It's like people really kind of ran with it and it hasn't gone away. Like it hasn't really. I think that's, I think it's also though, I think that piggybacks a little bit off the, the Doge meme itself. Like when Dogecoin was created, Doge as a meme also had like a really kind of loyal kind of base. Um, and so I don't know, I, I kind of put Doge in the same kind of bucket as like, um, you know, Pepe or, or, or all those other kind of, um, uh, gotcha, all yeah. the, you know, this is fine, you know, guy sitting yeah. with the cup. Like, yeah. I, I kind of like think of those as similar memes that have endured. I don't like it's, a, and it's, it, this is one of the most amazing things actually of stepping out of like crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube is like half the references that you know when you're so deep in it, like, you know, um, which I, I think both of you guys are still pretty deep in crypto. Um, mm -hmm. Like I go <laughs> too, and talk too to, deep. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. I go and you're, you're still down the rabbit hole. Uh, when you when you're out of the rabbit hole and you start talking to people, um, I've been pleasantly surprised to, to have met a lot of people in the last year who um, I say, "Oh, you heard of Dogecoin?" They're like. No, what's what's a Doge? I'm like, this is great. Let's have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, yeah, that would be a yeah. good feeling. I bet. <laughs> it's uh, like that. Well, um, it, it's great. I feel like I'm like. Did you see that movie? Um, it's yesterday where the guy like wakes up and nobody yes. remembers the Beatles. Right. Um, yes. yeah. I love it when I'm in a room of people who don't remember Doge coins. Great. That's that's actually well, a lot of people don't know. I mean, their memes have their their cult followings, like you said. But here's a boomer question: What is a meme? Well, it was it was a it, it was a definition of something that I don't know the actual definition. Per it was written by Richard, coined by Richard Dawkins, right? I want to yeah. say. Um, yes, it. but, uh, about kind of like a fleeting thing, which enters essentially the vocabulary of, of people, um, as a reference that everybody knows. I, I, I think that's more of the meme is a very ge generic term these days. Like I think it's yeah, used it's... not just for, for image memes, it's used for like speech memes, like short sayings and things like that. Yeah. I believe it's, I mean, it's way, the concept itself is very, very old as like, like just a cultural reference, mm. but it's, it's interesting how the, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, people used to reference movies all the time. That was our memes. And now yeah. in the age of the internet where everything is lightning fast, it's all about who can make, who can manipulate a photo to make it look absurd so that it can, you know. Fly yeah, the it's like weaponized speed. memes, man. Like that's the that's the currency of, of today, and it's uh, it's crazy because I, you know, what really, really, really irks me is when I see um, uh, like big like company like uh, you know corporate Twitter accounts and uh, and even po like politicians uh, like trying to like piggyback off memes or create their own memes. It's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, oh yeah. man, like puke. It is so bad. Um, but sometimes they seem to get steam, which is even more uh, concerning to me that people would oh, yeah. like that. But yeah, and they're they're always. I mean, I right now I kind of hate, hate saying this, but I work in advertising, so it's like I'm I'm always I'm always uh, I'm not well. I'm a, I'm a creative person in advertising, so I'm not often working with marketing people at corporations. But a lot of them mm -hmm. are are looking at at cult stuff on the internet maybe looking at something like crypto Twitter to see how stuff goes viral and to see how people consume media so that they can co-opt it and try to create their own media like that. And it's always you know, like crypto, like crypto Twitter would be an amazing, I hope that researchers have done this, like a study into kind of mass, like indoctrination and hysteria, you know, like I, I feel like it would be a, 
it's, it's kind almost of religious. It's almost that. like religion. Yeah. It's yeah, but well, it's like I mean, a, it's if, it's like a hyper like peak capitalist, like not Wall Street because it's like everybody's kind of like uh, you know a weird prepper who kind of wants it to go apocalypse. Um, so it's kind of like. <laughs> It is. It's, weird, it's yeah. such an. It would be such an interesting study. Like somebody should write a book about the whole thing, and I would totally read it. See, I, I disagree in the sense that it's peak capitalism. I think it's peak platform because we had it with radio, with War of the Worlds. We've had it with. We had it with TV when we didn't have cable, and then once we had cable, everybody went to CNN and, and Fox News, and and you know they're causing mass hysteria, or, or not mass hysteria, but you know hysteria, and then it becomes Twitter, and then it's you know just going to become the next platform that everybody kind of. It's like, I mean, ultimately, if it makes you feel better, I feel like in ten years you're going to be the wear the beefs guy, like because because I was talking with my <laughs> mom l- last night. Guy. I was visiting. What my do you mom mean by that? Our, our, I think our audience is not well. Maybe our audience wouldn't know exactly. Where's the beef, but <laughs> I, I, I would think most our people, don't, most people who listen to the show, don't know the reference. Where's the beef? Really? Wendy's, yeah, yeah. I would because I, I mean I'm I'm a young Gen Xer, so I think if, if most people are millennials, they're not going to have any clue what that means because mm-hmm. that was a commercial and commercial used to, commercials used to be our memes back in the day when we were. I kids. have no idea. I'm 22 years old. I've got no idea what that means. Oh, it was an <laughs> AM PM commercial where the chicks look at this old like 90 year old woman's looking at the hamburger and she's like, "Where's the beef?" And that was this cultural meme and on the West Coast meme. with with yeah. AM PM. Um, like little gas station mini marts, mm-hmm. and so I mean it was this huge reference, or maybe maybe it was a Wendy's commercial or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly. Dogecoin what. is destined th- for where's the beef? Yeah, and so I'm wondering that's a bold if, statement if, there, Michael. Watch out, <laughs> Coin Desk tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> Jackson crypto, Palmer crypt- calls himself the where's the beef of crypto. News I, at eleven. I, I, <laughs> crypto Bitlord says this is good for Bitcoin. You heard it here. But I'm, but I'm wondering if if once Twitter's over and we and we go into the next you know cultural platform, I'm wondering if people just kind of forget about. If, I'm wondering if if a lot of crypto memes will disappear with the disappearance of Twitter. Do you think that, really that you think that Twitter is going to? What do you, Michael? You keep on saying this like platform. So Twitter is the platform you're talking about. Yeah. So like commercials ta- used to be the platform that people got most of their like cultural so are you, references are you, are you, are you on a day to day basis. Are you kind of saying that you think Twitter will eventually go away? Are you saying I don't Twitter think it'll go we, we away? Short because, Twitter right now because we haven't gotten we haven't <laughs> gotten rid of commercials, but they're they're way less pre- prevalent than they were um, 10, 15 years ago. As we're seeing with the Super Bowl commercials, like like this last Super Bowl. I don't know a single person who referenced a Super Bowl commercial. And ten years you, ago, that's I, I think all you do make a good about. point. I, I, I think that um, you're on Twitter you too much. Look at if you look at platforms like TikTok <laughs> and stuff like that, right? Like, um, I do think that Twitter is a um, a platform that it probably is used by and resonates more with an older crowd, right? Like not the the younger generation. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like I don't know if crypto Twitter has bled over into into crypto TikTok, but I, I think it's a good. It's a good commentary on like how the medium is 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 can is still morphing even now that everything's yeah. online. It can still change, right? Um, that's a it's a good we point. Talk, yeah. We talk a lot about Twitter because that's where we do a lot of our engagement for the podcast. It's where we get a lot mm-hmm. of information about crypto. But I mean, I'm talking about like all social media and crypto because you were a crypto YouTuber. That was a big part of your 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 persona and your content. So, um, so Michael, when you say like platform, you're talking specifically about Twitter though, right? Uh, Yeah, more or less, because I don't think people were getting a lot of, I think some people were getting some memes from YouTube, but you you can't go viral on YouTube. Well, I guess you can go viral on YouTube, but, but, but Twitter is very much the the way that you share and TikTok, you can go viral on TikTok too. So I think it's all about gifts and memes and, and there will, there will undoubtedly be like a next gen. Like, and I think Twitter probably wants to be that, but, um, Twitter is not really, yeah. yeah, Twitter is not really used by young people. Uh, So I taught high school last year and the, the kids, I think I've said this on the show before, but kids t- kind of would take an identity. They would form their identity based on the social media that they use. You know, there were the yeah. Snapchat kids. And the, mm. You know, when I was a kid, it was all about what kind of music you listen to in high school. And now it's about what kind of social media you use, which is really kind of weird. And I don't know <laughs> if it was just my students, but the, the, the Twitter kids were really fucking weird. 
like the that's ones fascinating that, like, <laughs> yeah like i i think it's it, it's interesting so I you think fit that, right in jj <laughs> yeah um, well, i mean they were really strange like the 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 way that they the way that young people communicate on twitter when they do it is is completely unintelligible to an older person i think it's like yeah. i just the weirdest I, you know, my, my hope is that i just hope that the kids um I, they don't fall for like the traps of, of, of social media now that like social media is so well optimized to kind of like um, play them into that kind of drama you know, just do stuff that's controversial kind of um, sure, space. Yeah. Like one of the cool things about early Twitter, like and I've probably been on Twitter for way too long was that it was still kind of, you could kind of express yourself and you didn't feel like, back then at least, um, pushed into like a certain path or like tweeting about certain things. And so, I don't know, hopefully TikTok, I, I, I'm honestly not a TikTok user, but hopefully it hasn't already gone that way. Well, I, yeah, I, really, I, I feel like with, with Twitter, I feel like I have to have a different handle for each thing I want to talk about and it sucks. Yeah. And I do feel kind of pushing there. Like I have to worry about my brand with the, with the podcast mm-hmm. and this and that. And it's just like, oh God, I just want to like... Yeah, I've deleted Twitter on my phone like several times in the last like month, actually. Well, because I hate it, and I hate I hate when we're talking about crypto, and all of a sudden now we're talking about Twitter. It's like because we kind of have to use Twitter, and crypto Twitter is its own little culture, and yeah, we're talking about platforms and stuff like that. But it's like it is it is, does kind of breed discontent people. Oh, it does. I, I think you just have to like, and that goes outside to, of crypto, of course. That goes way outside crypto. Yeah, yeah, I think you just have to learn how to how to exist in in social media for like, and not lose your sanity. Like, I still do follow it pretty closely for the politics because um, I, I I think that um, like that that's the other thing that I kind of think about when you think about uh crypto is it's such like a drop in the bucket compared to like some of the other stuff that's happening on like the kind of world stage you know um yeah. and i feel i well, feel like it's barely you don't, a drop. You don't yeah. kind of you don't like check yourself on that until you've stepped out of it for a while um because while while you're in crypto you know you, you're really sitting there thinking that that gym friend photo was the most important thing that happened that day and it really wasn't <laughs> that's I, yeah i mean it's really funny it's it happens all the time on this podcast where like michael and i will we'll start talking about something that nobody else in the world would know about and oh you know what happens to me on twitter when i'm about to tweet something and i think who the fuck is this tweet for like this this <laughs> yeah. tweet this tweet is for like 10 other people on twitter that i've never met before right, or whatever right. and i'm thinking yeah. like this is not what i want to do delete 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 why don't I try to write? Why don't I tweet something that can actually reach a wider audience that is more applicable if I'm going to tweet about crypto at all? Or no, be creative so, and like write a new song or something instead. Or do something <laughs> that like actually adds value to the world. Yeah. I maybe. will say that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for Twitter because it, I feel like it gives me an outlet to, like you said, Jackson, to like follow news and keep up with what's going on with crypto and this and that with that. And I, I think I can count on one hand in the last six years I've been on Twitter, the amount of times I've gotten angry, but Facebook, I would be like raging every single day. Just oh, like really hate, I feel hate, like hate replying to people. And it's just like, that's it's like, this is not healthy. So I just finally in the last year, I've just kind of like dropped out. I go on mm-hmm. occasionally for this one group, this one crypto group I'm in. Hmm. And Michael, even that, are- I check like once a week. And are I'm you just like, eh. Michael? Are you talking about like you were? You're talking about a crypto Facebook, or are you talking about just Facebook in general? Just Facebook in general. Okay, uh, I see. Yeah. It just it just became so toxic, and I and for whatever reason that wasn't a platform I could control myself on. Whereas Twitter, I just don't give a shit. I'm just like somebody <laughs> talks shit. I'm just like, you know, emoji, whatever, bro, and then just move on with my life. And it's just like I don't care. It's like hmm. okay. You know, so uh, there's something about the anonymity of it all that allows me to. Yeah, that's true. Just not care and not feel like I'm. I'm um, Lucky you. In any of it, hmm. able to be anonymous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> so the guy trying to have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's. I mean, it's interesting for us to have a podcast. Like, oh, uh, another thing that you mentioned uh, on that first interview was that like. 
you you mentioned that you were grateful to be able to come on to a podcast that had very very few listeners, if <laughs> any at all, probably close to zero, and actually talk about things that you knew that you couldn't put on Twitter, or else yeah, you'd have to was, deal with the fallout. Yeah. And yeah, since then, point. since then, I've been like. <laughs> Keyword crypto, a safe place where no one listens and you can come and talk about anything that you want. <laughs> it's like I do safe. appreciate that though, because the problem with the problem with uh, you know Twitter is that it's so easily retweeted or it's so easily uh, screenshotted and then shared. Uh, it's a little harder. Like you share an audio clip, and everybody's gonna be like, "Why the hell are you sharing audio clip?" Like yeah. I can't get, yeah. I can't get frustrated yeah. and easily share that audio clip with ten of my more frustrated friends. Like, uh, so I think the format of podcasting is nice in that it lends itself a little bit to, um, you know, people can't just get infuriated about everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike and, and space to, is the only one. You have to the whole thing for an hour just to like find <laughs> one little clip. <laughs> so by the time you're just like, ah, oh, whatever, fuck it. Let's move on with right. my life. <laughs> I was going to say Mike and space is the only one that's probably going to listen to this episode all the way through. So All the uh, Nano hey, guys hey, do Mike now. Space. Hey, hey, Nano guys. <laughs> I was going to say Nano. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, this is like the inside joke here. So Nano is uh, still a thing. Yep, oh, Michael yeah. brings it up it's every strong. single fucking episode. Yeah. But I actually, <laughs> I um, I, I actually like getting mad about it at this point because it's kind of hilarious. But free crypto, yeah. I mean, well, like yeah. fr- free uh, to us, transact. OGs How can you hate that? Raycoin still but. exactly. Oh, yeah. Ray blocks. Ray blocks. Ray blocks. That's okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah oh, that's man. a that's a thing. We've got our own <laughs> meme. It's called Nano. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, well, I mean, that was a pretty fun. Somebody show. actually, one of the nano community got mad that we didn't bring it up with Elena. That I know, I like, saw that oh, all the time. Not to bring it up because well, like, now now oh, we've man. got all of these nano shells following us. Hey guys, welcome. We love we love you. Yeah, we actually get lots of great information about that that particular shit coin. But it's just like the mm. reason that actually it comes up, and I I'm grateful it comes up because it's an example of a cryptocurrency that could be free, and if that exists, like the hypothetical you know implications that yeah. that could have or whatever um are great but um it does it does do that thing that i value uh social media for which brings like-minded people together so we do have that community now which is kind of cool mm-hmm. yeah we talked about it last week but i mean jackson's like i feel like what i was saying is i found twitter where i could be not get angry but i also the reason why i gravitated towards nano versus iota and i talked about it last week is like iota was such a fucking high school prom shit show of like you know who's dancing with who and who's you mean you know that a lot of people got and, fucked and, that night or yeah and also a lot I, of people uh, got fucked i haven't kept up with iota at all and probably for my own well-being it's I been didn't. offline for the last 12 days and people are losing their shit <laughs> they, they, they shut they shut it's down so the decentralized project yeah i don't know how they yeah, did that yeah <laughs> Oh, I didn't know but, it was ever and, and that's the reason I, I gravitated yeah, no, towards Nano is everyone was just every, like it was like a bunch of people like you, Jackson, just like calm, chill coders like, oh, hey, this is what we do. Oh, yeah. You know, this is why. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I, oh, I, wow. I think I did a video on, on Nano and uh, it, it was pretty interesting. I think there are some reasons uh, that it's not. I think there are, there are still coordinators as far as I'm aware, like 23 of them or something, so right? Um, I, I, no, I think I think there's one or two, but they're only like twelve percent okay. of the total. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think the 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 virtue, like the the, the silver bullet, always that what I was on the lookout when I was in crypto was was the, the free thing, right? Like what yeah. what what uh, protocol can do this and somehow get around the whole incentives and you know is it proof of stake? Is it is it that? But I think yeah, um, yeah it's. I mean, so far, and I, and I keep saying, and I keep yeah. saying this to them, that the reason I pump it so much isn't because I'm a nano show; it's because I want somebody to attack it. Because yeah. in theory, well, this thing yeah. sounds amazing, but until somebody mm-hmm. actually brute force attacks it, we don't really know. And like, true, true, you can true. Talk all, you can talk all you mm-hmm. want about how decentralized something is, or how great something is, or like you said, how how great it is to be free, but we need. Well, I think the, the realization I had on that is I was kind of like trying to. And it was it was weird. I think I even might have alluded to it in some of my later videos. But um, as you kind of like try to figure out, like, okay, why do we want free money? Like, what are the general like reasons that we would even still like you? 
when you go deep enough into the kind of like crypto kind of rabbit hole, I found that you start actually asking yourself the, like why we have money. And yeah. uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, place. Like that was another part of why I think I left crypto is I kind of had this realization that I think society a hundred years from now won't have money at all. I don't think money will exist. And really? um, so that that's actually like the other thing to think about. That I don't think a lot of crypto people talk wow. about because they probably want to get rich off off whatever their, their coin they're shilling. But um, this would future societies yeah. require money? I think is an interesting thing to contemplate. Wow, should we talk about it for another hour? It sounds awesome. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. Do you want to expand on that just for like at that's least a pretty big, five minutes? Because that's, that's a pretty a big insane idea. statement to like drop drop like as we're about to end. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave you with it. No, <laughs> 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 something to noodle on. Um, no, I, I think you know maybe maybe I should come back some point time and we can actually have a, a full length discussion about it. But I think um, all right, that'd be good. The, yeah. The, the, the crux of it is that, um, you know, as, as society becomes um, kind of more wealthy generally um, and more technologically advanced and able to automate more things um, to a point where robots are doing all the menial stuff like the cleaning and the bus driving and the, the things that, um, that, that have typically had, you know, had low paid jobs, if we can ele- elevate all of society up to a point where everybody's needs are catered for um, through kind of a collective, um, you know, a collective system where people are working together. Um, do you really need money if everybody can be taken care of, right? If there is an overwhelming, like you have to assume, right? Like at some point in time, you know, if you look at the charts of how poverty has been reduced uh, over time, right? And a lot of people bring this up all the time. They say, we're actually living in the time where there's the lowest level of poverty worldwide. Um there's obviously still a lot of societies that have poverty, but um, if you if you kind of extend that out to 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 you know the, the the distant future, and you think if we can as a society not you know continue to argue and kill each other over pointless wars, um, could we get to a point where just everybody's needs are taken care of? Um, and at that point, why do you need money? You know, the so libertarians it's, it's an interesting, uh, are going to shit their pants when they this hear, is you, great. hear this. I agree with you. It's, it's something to we talk can about. It's like, it's like, I think it's Absolutely. one of those things where I, I don't think enough people have said, oh, you know, like, hey, the whole point of crypto is to like reinvent money. Well, why didn't we even, why didn't we start by just questioning the whole point of money? You know, right, yeah. Yeah. so I think it's, a, you, you, you have to do that analysis. And when you do, you start seeing different things. But wouldn't it like be I nice? Said, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if more people actually made their life goal trying to get everyone what they needed in the world like wouldn't wouldn't that be interesting <laughs> imagine yeah. wouldn't that be well great? we're not we are not taught to do that of course we're, not, we're <laughs> taught we're taught to to make sure life is good for ourselves but and hey for dude our maybe we, maybe we can use decentralized technology to help people organize to a point where everything is or we are striving to help everybody have what they need so i don't know like that's that's how i kind of see it like when people ask me whether like bitcoin's gonna change the world i'm like ah maybe not but maybe it can maybe the underlying technology can help us get to a point where you don't even need money to begin with you know? so like that's yeah. the but we should probably do a full that episode on it at some yeah, point okay <laughs> yeah that's, that's it's right. a long that's thoughts <laughs> Well, thanks again for coming on. It's uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll, always a pleasure to talk to you, Jackson. And yeah. Likewise. Yeah, so, so much fun. This is actually one of my favorite episodes. So. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for having me, guys. Right. Have a good one.
<laughs> there you go, getting the clickbait. They'll never know that it's no money. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Cool, man. Uh, awesome. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a, have a good night. Okay. Sweet. Bye. See ya. Oh, do I need to hit something? <laughs>